Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about how to play with vibrato. This video is going out to the whole high school, so I do know that there are some students that haven't learned how to use vibrato yet, and some students that have been using vibrato. So this video might seem a little slow to the people that have used it before, but we're just going to go over everything to make sure we're all on the same page. Go ahead and grab your instrument because we are going to be doing things that you can play along with me for. I'm going to be using a violin to model violin and viola, and I'm going to be using a cello to model cello and bass. The first thing you should always be thinking about, whether you're playing with vibrato or not, is your posture. So many things go into our posture and it directly affects our ability to play with vibrato. So you want to make sure you have your shoulder rest on so that you have the right amount of support so you don't have to feel like you're squeezing or holding on to your instrument. Remember that the instrument should always just come to you. Our left hand posture is also extremely important. We want to make sure that we don't have our wrist up and we're not squeezing the violin like we're holding it up. Remember, our instrument comes to us and the only thing that our hand is here doing is making sure we can put our fingers down. So you want to see a straight wrist, you don't want to see it poking out, and you don't want to see it coming in. You also want to make sure that on the other side, your thumb is relaxed on the side. Relaxation is extremely important when we're doing anything on our instrument, because if you're too tense or tight, you're not going to be able to control anything and get the sound that you want. A way that I check that my thumb is relaxed is I check that it has a little bit of bend in it and that I'm not coming up on the side. I can also tap it once in a while, even while I'm playing, to make sure that it's not super tight. We also want to make sure that we have relaxation in these fingers. We want to make sure that our finger's coming straight down, it's not coming in from the side, and we have a curve going this way on our fingers. We don't want to see our fingers coming down and bending the opposite way. Remember that when you're playing notes with your fingers, it's not about pushing all the way down into the string, but it's about seeing how little you can push but still get a good sound. Another general rule of thumb that goes in with not moving around like this is that our wrist is not going to touch the side of our instrument unless we're going into third, fourth, and higher positions. You should also be looking for your posture in your left arm. You don't want to have your arm holding your instrument up really high. You don't want it so far down that your arm is resting against your body and your elbow is what's going out. But you should be able to have clearance for both parts of your arms and you should kind of have a triangle going between your violin and your left arm. Another important part for posture is that you don't have your violin too far out this way or directly in front of you. Usually I go for about a 45 degree angle, maybe a little further to my left. Now there are a few more things that go into this with cello and bass. With the bass, a really important thing is that you don't want to be directly behind your instrument, but you also don't want to be sideways on your instrument. You want that kind of corner feeling so that you can wrap around the bass, but you can still reach with your bow. The same goes for cello. You don't want to wrap around your instrument. The instrument, just like with the violin and the viola, comes to you. So make sure you're sitting tall, put your cello out, and let it fall behind you. Make sure it's the right height for the pegs in the scroll. Make sure the end pin is out far enough. Make sure you're sitting on the edge of your seat. You don't want to have to wrap around to look and get the notes, or else your vibrato is not going to be controlled like you want it to be. So our triangle is a little different than with the violin and viola. Obviously, we don't hold our instrument out here. That would be really weird. You want to make sure that your elbow is up and your shoulder is relaxed. You don't want to rest your arm on your cello. You definitely don't want to reach it behind your cello. You just want to have it up so you can have a straight line going from your elbow to your wrist when you put your fingers down. This is the same with violin and viola. You want to make sure that your fingers are curved. They never should be going straight down. You also want to make sure you have thumb support. Your thumb goes behind your second finger so that you can stretch back with your first finger, stretch forward with your fourth finger, and all that stuff. Not all of the fingers are going to match the notes for the violin and viola for the vibrato tutorial, so you want to make sure that when we're doing third finger, even though a G is going to come out, you're going to be playing an F sharp. When second finger is playing F sharp, you guys are going to be playing a second finger F natural. Your E's are going to match. And then your fourth finger, they're going to be playing an A and you're going to be playing a G. Do what you can to get by the sound of the pitch and just follow along with the finger motions. Or if you'd like, you can practice it on your own with a metronome. When you're sure that your posture is set and you're very relaxed, now you're ready to start working on your vibrato. But actually, we're going to start by putting our instruments down. Before we can try to put the motion on our instrument, we should make sure we know how to do the motion. There are a couple ways that you can think about how the motion works. One way is by coming up to a wall or a door and making sure you have your straight wrist and your triangle going on with your elbow. And if you can knock back and forth with your knuckles, like you're knocking on a door. If you can keep this motion going and maintain a straight wrist and your arm isn't doing the knocking for you and make sure that your elbow looks pretty stable, 
then you have most of the motion down. But knocking on a door doesn't get us the posture immediately because usually when we knock on a door, we have a fist or we're not completely open and loose like we are when we're playing our instruments. So now I want you to find a household item somewhere, generally something that's gonna fit in the palm of your hand. It could be this little toy R2-D2 thing that very nicely fits in my hand. It could be a line that you stole from the kitchen. Or I've got this really cool little thing that looks like an apple, but it's a shaker. I'm gonna use this for the video just because it makes noise so you can follow what I'm doing with the noise. Now I want you to put your imaginary instrument here so we have our triangle with our instrument and our arm and we have our relaxed neutral wrist. So I want you to see if you can still do that back and forth knocking motion and keep your arm pretty still. Vibrato is a little different on lower string instruments because we have more of a rocking back and forth motion this way rather than with our wrist, because this would be, again, really weird. So cellists and bassists, go ahead and pick up your inanimate object. The way you can imagine the motion for vibrato on lower strings is like you're unlocking a locker at school with a combination lock. We have more of a side to side motion. So go ahead and grab your object, put that into your relaxed hand and see if you can move side to side. Make sure you're using your whole arm and you're not just using the angle of your fingers. I have a watch on, which is super helpful, and you might want to do that too if you're looking in a mirror. See if you can see your watch moving. Now this motion is different from the violin and the viola, but it's still going to fit the sequence for the rest of the video. We're doing it pretty slow because we want to make sure that every movement we're doing is intentional. Now this is the perfect time to take out your metronome. I suggested a metronome app in one of our first lessons when we were online, and I linked it in the, I believe it's the second slideshow, but I'm going to link it in today's slideshow as well. I'm going to use this metronome though, just because it's a little louder. I would like you to set your metronome to 50 beats per minute, and that's the speed that we're going to use to practice our vibrato. It seems a little slow, but trust me, stick to that tempo. Find your neutral position again, and now we're just going to move back and forth with the clicks of the metronome, like this. Subdividing will help too. If you think of eighth notes, it'll keep you from rushing or slowing down like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Feel free to rewind and practice that a few times or feel free to do it on your own with your metronome and without my video and see if you can consistently keep your vibrato going at that speed. After that, we're gonna go to the next level. The next level is to do our vibrato at the speed of those eighth notes that we were just subdividing. So now we're going to have one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And Remember, even while we're doing this exercise with our weird little maraca fruits or limes or toys, you want to make sure you have your hand nice and relaxed and open. We don't want to squeeze too hard. It should be really relaxed. It should be easy to just pull this in and out without a lot of motion in your hand. After we've done eighth notes, we're going to start dividing them as triplets, so we're going to fit three into each beat. You can break up the word triplet into three syllables to help you go through this with triplet, 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 triplet. Triplet, 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 triplet. Make sure you're still watching to make sure you have that triangle and that neutral wrist. What you'll notice with the triplet is that every other time you'll be starting in this direction or in this direction, and that is okay. After we finish practicing our vibrato with triplets, we're gonna move on to 16th notes. So now we're gonna have four motions within each beat. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Keep watching that posture. Once you've finished going through those four rhythms and you feel confident doing it on your own and maintaining your posture, now we're gonna switch back to our instruments. By now you should feel pretty comfortable with the position of having your triangle and your neutral wrist now that you have your instrument back. 
Remember what we talked about with our posture earlier. You want to be very relaxed. You don't want to be tense at all. You don't want to be grasping onto your instrument or clenching. This will make sure that we're able to control our vibrato. I mentioned this a few times throughout this video because it's really important. Keep your thumb on the back of the neck of your instrument. I taught myself vibrato when I was in middle school, I think, and I took my thumb off because I thought it made me more flexible to move my hand around, but I had no control of my vibrato. I didn't know where it was going. I had a hard time staying on the correct note because my finger would slide around. And then when I was properly taught vibrato by a private teacher, I had to completely relearn vibrato. I'm not trying to scare you with that. I'm just telling you, save yourself the time and keep your thumb on the back. We're gonna be using the same motion that we were using with that object to play vibrato on our instrument. So just to make sure we're on the same page, we're gonna be playing G with our third finger on the D string to practice our vibrato. First, let's just see if we can keep that motion. First, we just have our plain old G. If this was your G now, I would like you to do this and bring your hand back. You'll notice that the note came out a little lower, and that's correct. Now we're gonna practice going back and forth. Something that helps me get this motion but keep the same note is I imagine that my fingers are glued to the string and fingerboard and I'm trying to pull, but my fingers just won't move. Just to get cellos and basses going, we're gonna be doing first finger on the D string, which is E. Now, when you have your thumb on the back, you wanna make sure it's curved and it's always touching the neck and you wanna make sure your fingers are still curved too. See if you can still do this motion. Make sure your elbow's still up. Make sure you're moving from your whole arm like you can see my watch moving. So now take out your metronome again, and we're going to do quarter notes with these two notes. First, we're going to start off by doing short bows, just to make sure that we have plenty of time to move our hand. So it'll sound like this. When you feel like you're getting comfortable with that, you can start using longer legato bows. with my little apple maraca now we're going to move on to eighth notes one and two and three and four and keep an eye on your posture make sure you're not losing it Now we're going to try doing the same rhythm but with slurs. This way we can focus more on our left hand and not worry about changing bow direction so frequently with our right hand. Once you're comfortable with eighth notes, now we're going to move on to triplets. Remember, like I said last time, it'll be up, down, up for one triplet, and then down, up, down for the next triplet. So it's okay if it sounds backwards every other time. We're gonna start off by doing slurs just so that we can keep that bow motion constant. Once you're comfortable with that, now we're going to move on to our last rhythm, which is 16th notes. After you hit four, you can keep going. You can do five and a beat, six, seven, eight. I personally feel like once you get to seven, it starts to sound like a really consistent vibrato. Now this is gonna work the same way every time you use third finger. Whatever string you're on, whatever your position you're in, that's how we're gonna move our fingers to use vibrato. Now I'm gonna be going over how to do the same motion with your second finger, your first finger, and your fourth finger. But if you feel content practicing the rest on your own, feel free to do that. 
Now I'm going to be doing F sharp, which is two fingers on the D string. And I'm going to be doing quarter notes to match the clicks on my metronome. Keep watching your posture. You want to make sure that your thumb is nice and relaxed and touching the neck. Your fingers are curved. Your neck is relaxed and you're not squeezing onto your instrument. And you have your triangle. Now let's try eighth notes. Now we're going to try triplets. And finally, 16th notes. Remember, I did all of this with my metronome set to 50 beats per minute. So if you'd like to continue doing more of that on your own, set that as your tempo on your own metronome app. Now we're doing first finger E on the D string. We're going to start with quarter notes to match the clicks. And now we're doing eighth notes. Now we're moving on to triplets. And now we're going to do 16th notes, so groups of four. Now finally, we're going to do it with our fourth finger. Sometimes doing... And now finally, we're going to use our fourth finger. Sometimes playing fourth finger vibrato with all of our fingers down can be kind of complicated. So feel free to lift your first and second fingers and just use your third finger to help support your fourth finger in vibrato. First, we're going to start with quarter notes to match the clicks. Now, eighth notes. Now, triplets, so groups of three. And finally, 16th notes, groups of four. Something else that's really important to watch when you're doing fourth finger vibrato is that you still have a curve in your pinky. It's really easy to want to flatten it out because it feels like it stretches further or it's more comfortable to do it stretched than flat, but it's really important that to keep that controlled sound and keep the vibrato consistent with the rest of your fingers that you have a curve. Make sure you also have your thumb touching on the back and curved to support that pinky.